they will play the North winner for the Big 12 championship. Texas Tech and Oklahoma coming up next. Coach, we know you can put points on the board. How do you keep them from putting points on the board? Uh, just make your team plays. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Texas Tech won the toss, and they will defer. So it means that Coach Bob Stoops and the number one team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, will receive and have the first series. And we have got one NCAA leader after another. Oklahoma three team leaders their pass total defense scoring offense and of course two individual texas tech with two team and a couple of individuals down there simmons and henderson referee today veteran of big 12 john lorry he's a good one and his umpire is steve story and the weather issue today will be the wind as you look at it it is blowing briskly from right to left and that gives you an idea. We're here in West Texas, folks. That's just a gentle summer breeze <laughs> down here. 25 miles an hour, the flag flapping up there in the breeze. Ball on the tee is Keith Tugood, the redshirt freshman. Played high school football at Dallas Christian. And we are underway in Lubbock. And with the breeze at his back, it's out of the end zone. And coming out on the 20-yard line, Jason White, the leader in the battle for the Heisman Trophy, according to all those straw polls, and the nation's number one quarterback as far as pass efficiency, rating is concerned. 36 touchdowns and only six INTs as he brings the offense out. Bob Stoop told us yesterday that he could put more offense in with this quarterback than he could in the last two years. He really understands the whole package. And they come out and put Jason under center here moving into the wind and that will dictate the offensive game plan quick drop Jason scrambling off to the left and got about a yard before he was brought down let's take a look now at our SBC starting lineups now this offensive line's a good one but there's that one number that Texas Tech really was paying attention to five sacks they gave up and all the works Expected to see some time here in the backfield along with Kiwan Jones, number 47 and number 20. And a Luke Rosa finalist. That's the honor for Trey DiCarlo, their kicking specialist. And it will be second and long as that Red Raider defense looked tough there on first down. Four down linemen. You see the 4-3 look defensively against OU with four receivers out wide. White's in trouble, and he is sacked. There is sack number one. Back at the 11-yard line, he is taken down, and Adele Duckett, his 13th sack of the season. It's a blitz right here. John Saldi also comes right through the middle. Watch number five, runs right through the block. He's in on it, and then Duckett turns right over to him right from the start. Texas Tech has blitzed on first and second down. Ronaldo works, number 47, an excellent receiver alongside Jason White. Mark Clayton, the go-to wide out, number nine, comes through the formation. White looks right, fires now to Rankins. They will not get the first down. It is three and out, and an impressive defensive performance by the Red Raiders as Dawson, number 96, makes the play for the Red Raiders. Al Welker. And you can see the NCAA records that he holds there, better than 1,700 yards. He's a young man from Oklahoma. He was being recruited by Stoops. Stoops did not have a scholarship. Coach Leach had one down here, and he was able to convince Walker to come a little bit south of Oklahoma City, and they're happy to have it with that win now. This will be a tough punt for Blake Ferguson. Walker runs up, hit right at the 45-yard line on the move, but... It is a short field that B.J. Simmons will be working with after the 30-yard punt into the wind. 83 yards away from breaking Ty Detmer's all-time record with 5,106 yards, 47 touchdowns. They spread the field. They will make Oklahoma defend now sideline to sideline. One of the quickest releases you will ever see. He's got a good running back. We watched him yesterday over there at the coaches' tape, Torian Henderson. They opened with Henderson, 
And Henderson muscles his way close to the 40 yard line, which would be about a five yard gain. Dan Cody makes the play, and here's our SBC Texas Tech starting lineup. 49 career starts for Toby Cecil. He anchors that offensive line, senior from Richardson, Texas. And now, folks, take a look at this list 60 plus receptions for each of them. And Walker, we've already met him. He returned that punt. And second down coming up for B.J. Simmons here. Back in the shotgun. They work most of the time from the gun in this spread. Simmons has good time going for the touchdown. And he overthrew the wide out. It'll now be third down and five coming up as he took it deep to Carlos Francis. The Oklahoma defense. And Dan Cody, wherever you go around the Big 12, folks, his name quickly comes up. Dan Cody should be on the all Big 12 team this year. This is the third starting middle linebacker. Coach Bob Stoops told us last night that Gayron Allen has earned the honor. Now, strength versus strength. Dante Nicholson, well, basically, they'll stay in the nickel against this offense all game long. He'll press up toward the line of scrimmage. And right now, we note three down linemen for Oklahoma. They bring backers to the gaps. They can't get to Simmons. He drops it off over the middle now to Glover, and that's a first down. So they convert a third down. Rodney Poole makes the stop, but they could not, Gary, get to the quarterback. Oklahoma came with actually six defensive backs, but they stayed in zone. And when you're only rushing three, as accurate as B.J. Simmons is, you better latch on to these short receivers because he throws the ball short as good as anyone you've ever seen in college football. Texas Tech lost a heartbreaker in Austin last week to the Horns. You can ask Mac Brown and that staff, they moved the ball. There's the end of round, a familiar formation that they threw all game long, and that was with Wilker. Now, Wilker, along with having 947 receiving yards and 369 punt return yards. He's also run for 126 this year. So he's a bit of a triple threat man, number 27. He picked up a few yards on that first down. So Mike Leach's familiar offense moving the ball again. And the NCAA record for a 12 game season, 5,229 total yards this year for B.J. Simmons, an amazing story. Second down and six. Hitter. And stepping out of bounds at that first down marker that time. And so BJ Simmons went back now to the outside and Welker moves the chains. That is one of four different types of screens that Texas Tech will play throughout this game. The way they can neutralize a very good Oklahoma pass rush is with different types of screens and a very deep shotgun. Look how deep Welker is back there when he lines up in shotgun. He's six or seven yards deep. That doesn't allow those with those big spl splits, those guys to get him on that short game. Ball is at the Sooner 22-yard line. Here's Henderson. Cuts back to daylight and runs inside the 15-yard line. Dan Cody again from behind. But I can't tell you how impressed we were watching Henderson on tape against Texas and here today in a couple of carries he's been an impressive running back against this very very good OU defense. Well those splits of Texas Tech means that every time Henderson gets the ball he already has space. It's almost all draw plays. The coaches say they'll maintain the splits as long as the offensive linemen handle the men in front of them. If they start to have trouble and need help they tighten up the splits. Coming back now with Henderson Close to a first down. Jammed, you could see Nicholson joining Jackson, Tommy Harris, all in on that stop for the Sooners. So this one's going to be very close. Laurie's up there with one of his linesmen. And they're going to bring the chains out to measure this as we look here at Mike Leach. An interesting, very interesting creative coach. He's a graduate of BYU. A bit of a vagabond until he landed here at Texas Tech down in Lubbock. And he has done an excellent creative job. And the chains move again now to the 12-yard line. There's the backup quarterback, Sonny Cumbie, the junior from Snyder, Texas, listening in. And B.J. Simmons, Cliff Kingsbury, played ahead of him for three years. Simmons is a redshirt senior, if you will. He was redshirted way back his his freshman season. So this is his fifth year here, and it is magnificent what he has done 
in terms of putting up numbers as a first year starter. There's the splits that Gary told you about. They spread that field. They make it tough for the defenders. Four down linemen for OU. The inside shovel pass, and it was read beautifully, and Allen makes the stop. And so Simmons was asked about this Red Raider offense. It's tough to really put into words, but, you know, we just, we just expect the most, and uh, every time we take the field with an attitude, and, and we look to score every time we take the field. That's what they're looking to do here, but that last positive play by the OU defense put him now in second and long. So you would expect to see wide receivers running every which way now. Back in the gun is Simmons. Blitz is coming. Don't get there. Deflected incomplete, however. So the pressure works, and they force an incompletion, and it's third down. I think big Tommy Harris got his hand on that one. His left hand, he was running a stunt. And because of those big splits, it takes forever for Tommy to get there. You see him, he's at the nose tackle. He kind of comes out, goes to his left, and reads the eyes, and then just steps up and pops it with his left hand because that saved the completion. Here's the third down for Simmons and the Red Raiders. Leach would like a touchdown and not a field goal attempt. He had some kicking problems last week in Austin. Simmons flushed with a little bit of a gimpy left knee, runs hard right, throws end zone incomplete, threw it away. And it's field goal time for the Red Raiders. And so the Sooners are pressed into the red zone, and the defense then stands up for Coach Stoops. Now there's the field goal man, <laughs> Keith too good and uh, not automatic is it uh, no it's not everybody's looking at Mike Leach and going what are you going to do here, here? he comes <laughs> that would have been a very positive start for the three touchdown underdog Red Raiders wind at his back now left hash right footed kicker Dupree Scoble out of Dallas Hillcrest the Scoble family the third generation of the Scobles play Easy. in Lubbock. And he puts them ahead. So Keith too good was very good on that field goal attempt, and it's 3-0 tech. That sitting room only section, if you will, <laughs> behind the goalpost. Some of the students poured down in there. And with this breeze at two goods back, who knows? They may wind up with a with a football up there. The last one went out of the end zone, and we would expect this one to do likewise so the wind have to be a major major factor here before this day is done. so it'll be coming out the 20 yard line gives us a chance to take a look at the BCS presented by Allstate uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yep. Buckeyes scratch him out go down to number eight uh -oh. not a good week for the computers folks <laughs> they were touting those two they had one of those computers at TCU up to third. So the battle now, USC and LSU for that vaunted two spot, of course. Oklahoma has to take care of business right here. They are number one, clearly. I really feel that the wind affects Oklahoma's passing game more than Texas Tech. Texas Tech likes to throw short. Oklahoma likes to throw those corner deep routes. Go back in the eye. They will run Jones for a body yard. And Patrice Majando, Mawamba. There's a name. There's a mouthful for you, making the stop for the uh, for the Red Raiders. And he does it. And let's check in with Jack. Gary, you're absolutely right. I talked to Chuck Long before the game, talking about how the wind was going to affect them. He said, Jack, when the wind is at our backs, it won't affect us at all. But boy, going into the wind, he said, we're going to have to cut back on a lot of our long passes. Strikes me that they'll start to look a little bit like maybe Texas Tech. They'll try to. Yep. Now the last series and their first series was three and out. Now in a foot race, firing to Rankins and picking up a good seven yards before Jabari Smith, the junior corner, wraps him out. Now the Texas Tech D, and he's already had now. You can change that school record to 13 and a half <laughs> sacks because Duckett had one of the first series of this game. And of course Brock Stratton, the freshman. He lines up the defense, and uh, with the young defense, sometimes they'll get in the wrong spots, and uh, coaches are very concerned. And Ryan Acock, playing his last game at home, leads the team in tackles and six interceptions. Here's another third down. Third and three. Unusual to see this Sooner offense bogged down against anybody. Kept it moving. 40-yard line. 45. Breaking.
breaking free. Clayton spins inside the 30-yard line. Mark Clayton, who came into the season sort of a forgotten wideout of the Big 12 with Woods and Williams and all the other great ones, is now playing just as well, if not better, than any of them. Right out of the bunch, as Jack said, OU trying to be like Texas Tech. That little short passing game, and remember, OU must have it in their playbook because it came from Mike Leach when he used to be the coordinator. Boy, what a guy after the catch Mark Clayton is. Terrific athlete, as you can see, and after the 45-yard gain inside the 30, and here's Works, slips one tackle, but not the second. We check in for the first time today with uh, John Saunders back in New York. John, how are you and the boys doing today? Grant holding down the floor just fine. Ole Miss against LSU. Matt Mott gets picked off by Travis Johnson. He takes it six yards for the touchdown. USC and UCLA, Matt Liner, 21 yards to Mike Williams, and they're on top. Brent. All right, John, you can't give me enough highlights on those two games. Good buddy. They battle for number two now. We're looking at number one right here with Oklahoma and talking about great wide receivers. Mike Williams at USC, as good as anybody. High, incomplete. Had a step and couldn't get it. So it'll be third down. Well, Monday night, folks, the disappointing Giants against the disappointing Buccaneers <laughs> at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Jim Fossil, his job is on the line, folks. Now, the Buccaneers are going to be a favorite, and we're all interested in seeing how they're going to do without the big mouth. I mean, Keyshawn Johnson. Can they come away with a win on Monday night?